Hi, and welcome back. So, I made a quick throwaway video about the JS1175 plugin, and it caused a bit of a reaction. Funny how the number of views a video gets doesn't correlate at all with the time and effort I spend on it. Anyway, the big headline uses, the bug is fixed already. No need to hack the code as I did in that video. It's been taken care of in the latest Reaper update. And it's been fixed in a way that won't break existing projects as the old behavior is still available. In case you're interested, here's how the mystery unraveled. One of my viewers dug deeper into the code and found a line that looked like it could be the real problem. That 2.08 etc multiplier shouldn't have been there. And then Mr. Stillwell himself popped up and confirmed it, while also gently rebuking me for making a snide video instead of a bug report. It's a fair point. Though in my defence, I had no right to expect support for an old JS script that's bundled with Reaper. But then Justin posted a blog with the title 2006 me was an idiot and fessed up. It was he that inadvertently caused the issue while trying to solve a different problem. Something to do with logarithms, apparently. Anyway, it means I was wrong about the issue. It's actually the over dB variable that was too big in the line that I altered while the ratio calculation was fine. However, my dividing by 2.1 came pretty close to cancelling out the erroneous multiply by 2.08-ish, so my hack resulted in more or less correct behaviour regardless. It just shows that it's possible to get results even when you don't really know what you're doing, so I've hopefully encouraged a few more of you to dip your toes into JS code. It's important to understand that it's not voodoo black magic going on behind the scenes of your plugins. Nor, for the most part, is it really complex rocket science, but mostly just code like this that you can make sense of if you put the effort in to understand it. Anyway, Stillwell also confirmed a suspicion I had, that the 1175JS plugin was a testing ground for, and a precursor to, his Rocket Compressor plugin. Which brings me to another point which I really should have made in the last video. The Rocket does not, and never has, suffered from any such ratio issues. It's been in my compressor folder ever since its release, and is still useful to this day. Perhaps that's why it simply didn't occur to me that this needed pointing out, until someone asked the question in the comments. So as a tribute to this classic compressor plugin, and by way of apology to Mr. Stillwell, I'm going to show you a way to use the rocket that might not have occurred to you. Fast, FET style compression is indispensable for modern drum sounds, and the rocket does this kind of thing really well. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the fixed threshold approach taken by the 1176, and I prefer to have a threshold and a single gain control. However, quite often I want that type of compression, but with a lower ratio. Usually when processing a drum bus, in fact. I want that fast snappy attack and powerful release. But I also want to dig down deep into the dynamics of the part, rather than just shaping the loudest hits. And a 4 to 1 ratio tends to be too extreme for that. Of course you could run it in parallel. The rocket provides a knob for that. Actually this is my only issue with the interface design, which I otherwise really like. It's quite difficult to see where this knob is set. However, running a compressor in parallel is not at all the same as reducing the ratio. Let me show you that on a graph. Here's the rocket's 20 to 1 ratio, and 12 to 1. Eight to one. Four to one. The slope gets more gradual each time, but remains a straight line. Now let's try to turn the four to one ratio into a two to one ratio by mixing it with the dry signal. I mean, that seems like it should work, right? But in fact, we get this upward curve instead. The compression still kicks in suddenly above the threshold but then the ratio gradually reduces as the levels increase further. Basically, exactly the opposite of a soft knee. However, we can reverse that shape with some funky sidechain trickery. Here I have two instances of the rocket, with the top one processing the sidechain of the bottom one. 
If you're wondering how I managed to do that inside Plugin Doctor, well, I'm actually analysing an instance of Meta Plugin, also from DDMF, into which I've loaded our two instances of the rocket with the requisite routing. Both compressors have the same threshold setting, but the top instance that's processing the sidechain is currently set all dry, so it's just passing the unprocessed signal, which means the bottom compressor is behaving exactly as it did before and giving us a 4 to 1 ratio. So let's set the sidechain compressor all wet. And look at that lovely low ratio. This is actually a lot less than 2 to 1. This kind of very low ratio can actually be useful on a full mix. But notice what happens when I start to blend the dry and wet signals for the sidechain. The main compressor ratio gets higher again, but also now increases gradually as the signal level increases. Exactly the opposite of the curve you get from parallel compression. Dialing in about 30% dry signal gives a ratio that starts a little below 2 to 1 and rises to a little above 2 to 1 if you hit it hard enough. And this looks like an excellent drum bus compressor transfer. So let's set this up in Reaper. We'll have two instances of the rocket and let's rename them to avoid confusion. I'll go with rocket sidechain and rocket low ratio. Rocket low ratio needs to be listening to its sidechain input. And rocket sidechain needs its output rerouted to channels 3 and 4. Now I'm going to link the threshold sliders. I'll click the sidechain threshold to select it, pick parameter modulation slash linking, and then choose linking in the pop-up window. Down below I now need to navigate to the other rocket instance and pick threshold. Now, wherever I set the main compressor threshold, the sidechain threshold will be the same. You can link other parameters in the same way if you want. I'm going to link the release times for the sake of simplicity. But while you can link the attack times, I'm not going to for reasons that will become clear. Finally, let's set the mix knob for the sidechain compressor. Honestly, it's easier to turn off the interface temporarily and use the slider with a readout instead. Let's go for 30%. So, how does that sound? Well, kind of like a bus compressor, actually. Notice how hard the side chain compressor is hitting the signal compared to the main compressor. That's what a 4 to 1 ratio would be doing, of course, if we switched back to normal operation. But the sidechain trickery also allows us to finely tune the attack behaviour in a very useful way. Notice how the transients are enhanced as I slow down the attack. Much as you would expect from this type of compressor, only a lot more subtle and gentle. But remember, the sidechain compressor's attack time is not linked so it's still smashing the transients as fast as it can, which means that the main compressor hears less of those transients and reacts less aggressively to them. Now listen as I slow down the attack for the sidechain compressor. The main compressor is now reacting much more to those transients and shaping them more aggressively. Listen to how the attack changes with different settings. And now with the sidechain compressor back to its fastest attack. I'm actually a big fan of this type of setting, with the sidechain attack much faster than the main compressor's attack. The shaping of the transients is real and useful. Here's the dry signal for reference. And yet it remains deliciously subtle and transparent, even when pushed hard, quite unlike normal FET-style compression. 
if it seems like too much hassle to get there. Well, not really. At least not in Reaper, anyway. Select both instances of the rocket and save them as an effect chain. Then next time you want it, simply load that chain. The routing and parameter linking will be preserved, so you might not even need to open the sidechain instance. You can just dial in your low ratio rocket like any other compressor. This technique is actually similar to the fabulous fake feedback trick that I showed in my second recomp video, which I'll pop a card up for here. But I don't think I touched on using parallel compression in the sidechain to create a kind of soft, gradually increasing knee in the main compressor. And anyway, looking at the stats, not many of you watched that one, so I make no apology for revisiting it here. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching.